said, I welcome everyone tonight again in Jesus' name. I must say, I always appreciate your faithfulness. On a day like this, that we are all here, your coming will not be in vain. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight. And we bless your name for bringing us together. Thank you for what you are doing already. Thank you for what you are going to do. Thank you for the great expectation of your people in this coming retreat. Jesus, the final solution. And we pray, Lord, everyone attending this retreat here at the headquarters, here in Lagos State, all over the regions and all over the states in Nigeria, all over the various countries in Africa and beyond Africa, Europe and America, Canada, everywhere. We're asking, O oh Lord, special blessing will come upon everyone. Yeah. Untold blessings, measureless blessing, you will heap upon everyone in Jesus' name. Lead us tonight in the meeting. Open our eyes to see, our hearts to believe, and great things to come in every life tonight in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to James chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 13 all through to verse 18. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save, heal the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth a fruit. Tonight we are considering a special subject, and it is a subject of healing. The topic is God's provision for healing throughout the Bible. God's provision for healing throughout the Bible. As you look at James chapter 5, verse 14, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil, a symbol of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It gives us a clear answer, solution. And it says, when we pray, that prayer of faith will save, will heal the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. During this final solution retreat, the sick will be healed. Incurable will be cured. And any power to mention anyone will be put down and crushed from every life in Jesus' name. If he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. There will be forgiveness, there will be redemption, there will be salvation in Jesus' name. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The believer is not in doubt that when he's sick, if he's sick, 
that healing will come. And we are not in doubt that as we pray in the name of the Lord, and we pray the prayer of faith, the sick will be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Tonight, the message is God's provision for our healing throughout the Bible. That means provision is made anywhere you go in the Bible. Any book of the Bible you go, you'll find the power of God there, the supernatural there. And you'll find the victory of the children of God there. Four things we're looking at. Number one, the final solution of healing from the beginning. As we look at the Bible from the beginning, we we'll see the final solution of healing from the beginning. Number two, the four sin stripes for sin. That is, the prophets foresaw, they saw it ahead, the four, the four sin stripes for healing in his blessing. They saw it coming, that Christ will come, a Savior will come. And that he will have stripes on him. And by those stripes, you must be healed. The foresee stripes of healing in his blessing. Number three, is full salvation with healing. When Jesus came and he declared to us salvation and he gave salvation, he gave that salvation with healing. Number three. Three is full salvation with healing for all believers. Anyone, everyone that believes. Number four, the faithful source of health for the body, the whole body of Christ, and the body of every believer. There's a faithful source of health for the body. Point number one, tell me your point number one there. Talk like you know final solution has come. The final solution of healing from the beginning. We're looking at Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 7. Genesis chapter 20. Reading from verse 7. Now therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. But, and if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, and that thou and all that are thine. Here be Melik and his wife and the whole family. They had this peculiar kind of barrenness because it came as a result of sin. And the Lord said from the very beginning that restore the man is why. You don't have to do any other thing. You don't have to roll on the ground and pass and quote promises and shed tears and knock at the door, whatever. Just restore the man his wife and tell him to pray for you. You will be healed. Very simple. Look at verse 17. So Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abimelech. The Lord will heal every one of us. And his wife and the handmaids and they bear children. A change will come. Once we do what he wants us to do and then prayer is offered, you'll be delivered. We're looking at Exodus chapter 15. Here the Lord gave a covenant to the children of Israel and it's a covenant of healing. It's like the covenant of marriage. You accept this person? Yes, I do. You'll take care of her? Yes, I will. The same thing, a covenant. And there are two parts of the covenant. And the Lord gives this covenant of healing. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. Look at this. I will put none of these diseases 
upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Every day you wake up, the great I am is still the great I am. And it says I am. It's not just that I was. It's not that I will be. The covenant is I am the Lord that healeth thee. Leviticus chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 18. Leviticus chapter 13. And we're reading from verse 18. It says in verse 18 of Leviticus chapter 13 tells all the clear promise of God it says the flesh also in which even in the skin thereof was a boil is healed you see every one of those uh, Israelites they knew that when they called upon the Lord the promise is everywhere the oppression is everywhere they will be healed we're going to the final solution camp i am going to the final solution camp anywhere you turn if you have any challenge a brother can just pray together with you and if any two of you shall agree as touching anything it will be done and then when you come to the central meeting any passage we're quoting any book we're reading there is healing there is deliverance and there is provision waiting for you i'm looking at numbers chapter 21 in numbers chapter 21 you know the story already i'm just reminding you verse 8 and the lord said unto moses make thee a fairy serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that every one that is beaten when he looketh upon it shall live remember jesus referred to this that as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so shall the son of man be lifted up that whosoever whosoever you are that whosoever you will not die before your time sickness will not kill you whosoever looketh on him will live look at verse 9 and moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole and it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass he lived as we behold the lord as we see the lord as we meditate on the sacrifice of christ as you see the one that is lifted up, you will be healed. Even tonight, you will be healed. Deuteronomy chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15. And the Lord will take away from thee, tell me, all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, and will lay them upon them that hate thee. The diseases of your enemies will not flow to you, will not come to your life. You will be free. You will be free. Welcome to Joshua. And in Joshua, we're looking at uh, chapter 14. This one now is the testimony of Joshua, saying, didn't God give us the promise as well as the covenant of healing? He's fulfilled it for me. And then look at what Joshua, Lord uh, Caleb is saying. Joshua chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 12. Let's go back uh, to verse 10. It says in verse 10, And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. He will keep you alive. He wasn't staying alive. I mean, Caleb was not alive with cancer alive with tuberculosis alive with any kind of sickness now behold the lord has kept me alive as he has said these 40 and five years can you think about a man strong and healthy 45 years from the time he went to the land of canaan and uh, to spy out the land until this time and they were walking every time and they were moving in the wilderness every time, and yet he was healthy and strong, this will come upon you. 
it says in that verse then even said the lord spake this word unto moses while the children of israel wandered in the wilderness and now lo i am this day four score and five years old 85 years old even some people will not be able to stand at that time 85 years of age arthritis or cripple them and then their eyes will not see and behold anything even at that age 85 some people cannot even see the mountain but caleb said i'm a beneficiary of the promise of god i can see the mountain i can walk the walk i can climb i can go now as yet in verse 11 i'm as strong as healthy this day as i was in the day that moses sent me as my strength was then as my health was then as my soundness was then even so is my strength now for war both to go out and to come in now therefore give me this mountain whereof the lord spake in that day for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there and then he goes on he still had the strength you will have the strength you will have might I said you will have might I'm looking at Judges chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 12 Judges chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 12 and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him the Lord is with you is with you that mighty man of valor, if he was sick, dejected, depressed, discouraged, because the Midianites are after us, and because the Midianites will not even allow us to eat the fruit of our labor, if because of that he was so weak and weakened, impotent and sick, how could the angel say, thou mighty man of valor, if you have lost your might, your might will come back. Your power will come back. And then a Ruth, you understand the Ruth is talking about a Ruth and Naomi. And Naomi had said, I am, don't call me uh, Naomi anymore because now it's Mara. Because I'm so sorrowful. And you know, sorrow of heart can cause sickness. A broken heart can cause sickness. But when something happens in your life and God does something, you are revived. That you can read on your own because of time that's Ruth chapter 4 reading from verse 11 and then 14 to um, 17 and then we'll come to first Samuel in first Samuel chapter 1 you remember our moderator mentioned our Sunday school teacher mentioned it tonight about Anna that prayed and the barrenness was taken away our time has now come I said, your time has now come. That you'll find in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 12 to 18. But let me read chapter 6. Chapter 6, 1 Samuel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, And they said, If ye send away the ark of God, of the God of Israel, send it not empty, but in, in any wise return him with a trespass offering, then ye shall be healed. Then ye shall be healed. Look at everywhere telling us there's healing for me, there's healing for you, there's healing for our families. You will not die prematurely. Look at Second Samuel chapter 24. Second Samuel chapter 24. And the situation here is that 70,000 people already were dead because there was pestilence all over, all over the land. And look at, uh, you know, what had happened in Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 15. It says in verse 15, So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning, even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan, even to Beersheba, 70,000 men. 
And now, how will that plague be stored? Be stored? Look at verse 25. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the, uh, for the land and the plague was taken from Israel. That means then if there is any kind of a pestilence uh, that ravages the land, we can pray. And the Lord will give healing, not just one person, not just one family. He can heal the whole of deeper life with one single prayer. I said he can heal all of us with one single prayer. We're coming to First Kings chapter 13. In First Kings chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 4. It is the story of the man of God that came from, uh, you know, that came from Elam Judah. And then he prophesied and spoke and Jeroboam, you know, was unhappy about that. And he stretched out his hand and he said, take him, hold, hold him. Any hand that is stretched out to you for evil will dry up. Look at 1 Kings chapter 13 verse 4, verse 4. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth a sand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him and his hand which... He put forth against him, tell me, dried up, so that he could not pull, he could not uh, pull it in again to him. I know your life is protected. I know your life is secured. All those hands that you want to do evil to you, the Lord will dry them up. Look at verse 6, and the king answered and said, Unto the man of God, entreat now, pray now for, uh, for me, entreat the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God sought the Lord, and instantaneously there the king's hand was restored again and became as it was before. Miracle. In your life, miracle. In your body, miracle. Look at it, it's like, uh, you know, the man of God and uh, this uh, man, Jeroboam, they were not in good terms together. And that's why he wanted to lay hold on him and to destroy him. But, you know, immediately he said, okay, I'm sorry for that, wanting to hurt you, but uh, pray for me. And immediately, God does not waste time. In your life, God will not waste time. In your situation, God will not waste time. Healing, healing has come. Deliverance, deliverance has come. Second Kings now, chapter 5. You remember Second Kings chapter 5 in verse 3? And she said as the little maid to her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And then eventually the story of the news got to Naaman. And Naaman went there. Look at verse 10. And Elisha sent a message unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. You know the story. I'm just reminding you. Look at verse 14. Eventually when he did. And then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again, and your flesh will come again, and your health will come again, and your power will come again, and the recovery will come again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. And he was clean. You remember Second Kings chapter 20? Second Kings, uh, I'm reading here from chapter 20. New life. Abundant life. Extra life. 
many years given to you. In those days, chapter 20, verse 1, was Hezekiah seek unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Are you ready for that? I said, do you accept that? Ezekiel will not accept. Any evil you don't accept will not come in your life. Then he turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember me how I have walked before thee in truth with a perfect hand and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiel wept so, and it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Ezekiah, the captain of my people, the pastor of my people over there, the women leader of my people over there, you didn't hear, you didn't say amen. And the captain of my people over there, thus says the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. Nobody can contradict it. Satan cannot reverse it. I will heal thee on the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Not only that, I will add to thy days fifteen years. Amen, amen. Well, as we go on, if you can look at First Chronicles, just write it down because of our time. First Chronicles chapter 4 verses 9 and 10. And then you can look at Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 20. And as you come to Ezra, when you waited upon the Lord with the people and they fasted, God answered. As you wait on the Lord and your fast, God will answer. Ezra chapter 8, verses 21 to 23. And then you come to Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 4. The strength of those people, they had to walk in the day and in the night, and they would not even put up their clothes. They were so powerful and energetic. The power of the Lord will move in your life in Jesus' name. Nehemiah chapter 4 verses 21 to 23 and then you come to Esther you see that in Esther in chapter 9 Esther chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 22 Esther chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 22 it says in verse 22 as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies and their mouth which was set on and their mouth which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy from sorrow to joy the joy of the Lord will be your strength you know when somebody is sorrowful the heart is broken it's like any kind of sickness can be attached to that person because he's vulnerable but when your sorrow is taken away and joy has come you'll be healthy and from morning into a good day that they should make them days of feasting and joy instead of the fasting they had fasted and then after the feasting and joy and of the sending of portions one to another and gives it to the poor they became healthy and they became strong I'm looking at um, Job chapter 33. In Job chapter 33, it reminds us and assures us of the miracle working power of God. Every sickness will be taken away in Jesus' name. Job chapter 33 verse 21, His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen is is a bones that were not seen stick out yea his soul draweth near unto the grave and his life eh, to the destroyers if there be a messenger with him 
an interpreter of the word of God, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness. Then God is gracious unto him and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. You return to the days of your youth. How strong you are, and you could jump up and down, and you knew no tiredness at all. Those days are coming back. He shall pray unto God, and you will be favorable unto him, and he shall see his face with joy, and uh, for he will rain down to man his righteousness. The Lord will look at your righteousness that you have through Christ, and every sickness, every infirmity will pass away in your body in Jesus' name. Psalm 103, I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 103, we're reading from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and healeth how many diseases? All thy diseases. It takes away every sin and it takes away and heals every sickness. In fact, when the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, look at the testimony we have about them. Psalm 105, verse 37. He brought them forth with silver and gold, new job, new prosperity. This coming year, he will prosper you in Jesus' name. And it says, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Not one feeble person among their tribes. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. In Proverbs, you can write this down because of time. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 20 to 22. In Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verses 4 and 5, the power of the King of Kings will work marvelously well in your life in Jesus' name. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? It's coming. And in Songs of Solomon, you can write down chapter 2, verse 15. Chapter 2, verse 15. My beloved is mine and I'm his. And he takes away the foxes that spoil our vine. Anything that will spoil the tender, the, the tender health you have, the Lord will take everything away in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the foreseen strives for healing in his blessing. Here comes now the time of the prophets. And the prophets kept on talking about the power of God and the strength of the Lord. And they say that he's going to heal us if we're sick. And in fact, the prophet saw ahead of time the uh, stripes that will be laid on Christ. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. And we're reading from verse 5. Isaiah 53 verse 5. It says, but he was one dead for transgressions. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was uh, bruised for iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Tell me the rest now. Say it confidently. Shout it aloud. Apply it to your life. And with his stripes were healed. The foreseen stripes for healing. In his blessing, look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 30, I'm reading from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30, and we're looking at verse 17. For I will restore health unto you. I will heal you of your wounds, says the Lord, because thou had called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. 
Look at chapter 31, verse 11. For the Lord shall redeem Jacob and ransom him from the hand of him that is stronger than he. That uh, sickness that is stronger than any medicine, God will heal that sickness. Uh, look at chapter 32 of Jeremiah, verse 17. Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm, and there is nothing to hard for thee. In your life, there is nothing to hard for God. On your wife, there's nothing too hard for God. On your husband, your children, there's nothing too hard for God. Miracles of healing upon your life in Jesus' name. Chapter 33 of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. The miracles you have never seen, you will see. Look at verse 6, Behold, I will bring it health and kill. I will bring you health and kill. And I will kill them. He will kill you. And he will reveal unto you the abundance of peace and truth. Looks like uh, this uh, retreat is going to be special. The power of God is going to come without any limitation in Jesus' name. Lamentation, I'm reading from chapter 3. Lamentation, chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 22. Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 22. It is the Lord's mercy. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. The compassion of the Lord. You remember Jesus? He had compassion on them and he healed them. And the same thing we're being told here. The prophets are prophesying ahead of time. His compassion will not fail. They are new every morning. And he says, great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, the portion of my soul. He says, my portion says my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. Verse 25, the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. All the time the Lord is good. It says the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. And to the soul that seeketh him. The Lord will show his goodness to everyone. As we get to that uh, retreat in Jesus name. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. And here we're reading from verse uh, 11. Ezekiel chapter 34. We're reading from verse 11. Why don't you go back for us uh, to verse, um, uh, verse 4 and see what the Lord expected of the shepherds of Israel. In Ezekiel chapter 34, reading from verse 4, the disease have ye not strengthened. He expects us to strengthen the disease. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. He expects us to heal the sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have you, have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty ye have ruled them. Verse 11, for, the, for thus says the Lord, God, behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. When he searches them out, what will he do? Look at verse 26. Verse 26, and I will make them at the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in the season. Then the last line, why don't you read that yourself? In your family, why don't you pronounce it? Upon your life, why don't you prophesy? And in our church, why don't you prophesy and proclaim? There shall be showers of blessing. There will be showers in Jesus' name. 
Daniel, just write this down because of our time. Daniel chapter 1, verse 15. You remember the story. And Daniel said, just feed us with the vegetable and water. And that's enough. And then after 10 days, they examined them. The countenance was fresher and fatter, and they were healthier. Then you remember chapter 3 of Daniel, they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into fire. When you go through the fire, it will not burn you. And the flame will not kindle upon your life in Jesus' name. And then Nebuchadnezzar peeped in and said, a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, thou servants of the Most High God, come out. And they came out, and there was no smell of fire upon them, or upon their clothes. All the fire of the devil from the world will not touch you. And then you remember Daniel in chapter 6, how he was put into the lion's den, and all through the night, the Lord kept him. The Lord will keep you. I said, the Lord will keep you, and no evil will come upon your life in Jesus' name. I'm coming now to Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn, and he will heal us. Hosea said, he will heal us. Jeremiah said, he will heal us. Ezekiel said, he will heal us. Isaiah said, by stripes we are healed, you cannot escape the healing. He has torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. I'm sure you remember uh, Joel. Joel tells us in chapter 2, verse 21. Joel, chapter 2, verse 21. He tells us in verse 21, fear not, old land. Fear not, O oh, our church, fear not, deeper life, fear not, O oh, large, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Healing, great things. Deliverance, great things. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, and it shall, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Amos chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. Amos chapter 5, verse 4, for thus says the Lord unto the house of Israel, seek ye me, and ye shall live and not die. Any sickness, any infirmity, any problem, seek the Lord, seek ye me, and ye shall live. Look at verse 14, seek good and not evil, that she may live. You want to live, you want to get rid of every form of sickness, seek the Lord. And it says, not evil, that she may live. So the Lord, the God of all, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Somebody shout an amen. amen. The next book is Obadiah. You know this, verse 17. Obadiah, verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. Healing and holiness go together. Sin and sickness go together. But as we're delivered, then it says there will be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. You are coming to the retreat to possess. And you will possess in Jesus' name. You remember Jonah? Look at Jonah chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 7. Jonah chapter 2. We're reading from verse 7. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. It was in the, uh, in the whale to breathe. How will he breathe? And then all the things that surround him. Then he said, I went to the depths of the mountains. And now he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord heard his prayer. He couldn't even kneel down because, you know, he didn't know his worry about where am I? What am I doing here? And what's the situation here? And he couldn't even open his mouth. If he opened his mouth, all the things in that way will be gushing into the mouth. And yet he prayed, and yet he prayed. Whether you pray silent prayer, 
prayer or loud prayer, kneeling prayer or standing prayer, whatever, God is about to answer your prayer in a miraculous way. And in verse 10, and the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah from uh, upon the dry land. Now the point is this, after Jonah had been in that condition for those uh, three days, to know even all the things that rushed into the ear, all the things that rushed into the mouth, all the things that surrounded him, he would need some real therapy to get everything solved. God did all the therapy miraculously. And look at chapter 3, verse 3. So Jonah arose and he went unto Nineveh according to the words of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah was so strong and Jonah was so healthy that by himself he walked through all the city and began to enter into the city this journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days his voice came back, his strength came back all the joints were all right the lord will make every part of your body to enjoy his divine miraculous touch in jesus name and then he could now prophesy yet 40 days and in it they shall be overthrown when i come to the next book we're looking at micah chapter 2 verse 7 in micah chapter 2 i'm reading here from verse 7 it tells us O thou that art named the house of jacob is the spirit of the lord straightened at there at these his doings do not my words do good to him that walk uprightly it means the word of promise will do good in your life and the word of power will do good in your life nahum chapter one i'm reading from verse seven nahum chapter one we're reading from verse seven in um, in nahum chapter one Reading from verse 7, it tells us in verse 7, it says, The Lord is good, is stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust him. He knoweth them that trust him. As you trust the Lord, miracles in your life. Verse 13, for now will I speak and is when I break his yoke from, from of thee and will burst the bands asunder in verse 15 behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bring good tidings and the publisher peace O Judah keep thy solemn feast and then it goes on to say that as you do that, the, the blessing of the Lord will be upon you and perform thy vows, and for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. The wicked shall no more pass through your territory, or through your house, or through anything property belonging to you. is utterly cut off. Utterly cut off. Habakkuk chapter 2, Habakkuk chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 4, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, it says, Behold, a soul which is lifted up in him is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. You will live a strong life, a powerful life an incorruptible life in jesus name in sephaniah chapter 3 verse 9 sephaniah chapter 3 verse 9 for then will i turn to the people in pure language that they may all call upon the name of the lord to serve him with one consent and when we call upon the name of the lord his answer will come Look at verse 20, at that time when I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity. As I turn back the captivity of Job, it will turn back your own captivity. Before your eyes, says the Lord, in Agai, Agai chapter 2, I'm reading here from verse 4. Agai chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel. 
Be strong, my brother there. Be strong, my sister there, says the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, says the Lord. And work, for I am with you. As a healer, I am with you. As your provider, I am with you. As your deliverer, I am with you, says the Lord. Look at verse 9. And the glory of the latter house shall be, shall be greater than of the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, in this place, in this place, tell me, tell me, I will give you peace, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. The Lord will give you peace. And I will strengthen you. Look at chapter 2 of uh, Zechariah. And I'm reading here from verse 5. Chapter 2 of Zechariah, verse 5. For I, says the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about. Serpents will not be able to crawl in to you through that fire. Lions will not be able to move in through that fire. An evil power will not be able to come and catch you and touch you through that fire. For I, says the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. In verse 8, in verse 8, it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory as he sent me unto the nations for he that uh, uh, which spoiled you for he that touches you touches the apple of his hand make it personal say it confidently he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. Now we come to the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 4, and I'm reading here from verse 2. Malachi chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 2. It says in verse 2, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise. With what? Tell me, tell me. With healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves of the storm. We come to point number three now. Point number three is full salvation with healing for all believers. As you come to the New Testament, the Savior has now come. And the Savior has come with full salvation. And everywhere he went, the full salvation also included the healing. Look at Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8. And I'm reading here from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, we're looking at verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed how many people? All that was seen, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He has borne my sickness. He has carried all my sickness away. And when he carries it away, it will no more be there in your body. In Jesus' name, you are well. Your wife is well. Your husband is well. Your children are healthy. The whole household will have sicknesses carried away from them. In Jesus' name. Look at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. The salvation, the salvation. But the salvation comes also with healing. Verse 9. Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed and walk, but that she may know that the Son of Man 
man has power on earth to forgive sin, he says to the sick of the palsy, as he's saying to you right now, I say unto you, arise, take up thy bed, go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose and took up his bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Come to this final solution retreat. The power of God that will be unleashed on you the deliverance that will flow into your life and the prosperity that will be released on your life, you will say, I've been coming to retreats before I never saw it on this fashion. Something new, something spectacular, something great, greater than anything you have ever experienced for salvation with his healing. My, we're looking at Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4, we're reading from verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the Lord Jesus Christ talking because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. Broken, broken heart will not kill you. Sorrow will not kill you. Sadness will not kill you. It will bring a brighter day in your heart in Jesus name. Your broken heart will be healed and to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 21, and he began to say unto them this day, is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? This is our time. This is our day. We're looking at uh, John chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 5. John chapter 5 verse 5. Uh, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. And Jesus uh, saw him. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there now a long time. Uh, in that case, he says unto him, uh, will thou be made whole? And he's still asking the same question today. Will thou be made whole? Will thou be healed? Will you become stronger? And the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. Jesus says unto him, Rise. He didn't even touch him. Rise. He didn't throw any oil on him. Rise. He didn't shake him or push him. Rise. He didn't lift him up. Rise. Take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole. And he took up his bed and walked. And on it was the same day was the Sabbath day. Power has come. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 6. Reading from verse 6. Say, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give thee, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, somebody help me shout immediately. His ankle bones and his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, he never walked before, and he is never taking any step. And he, he wasn't, a, he wasn't a sportsman before, but look at him now. Power will meet your need. Provision will come to your need. And it says, and leaping up, and he stood, and he walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Our time has come. Because Jesus is still alive and Jesus will do this in your life, in my life, in your family, in my family, in the whole church, in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth or the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing how many people? 
No exception this time. I said, how many people? How many people will Jesus touch and heal and deliver during this time? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 11. Romans chapter 8. We're reading from verse 11. What Jesus will do, what the Holy Ghost will do in every one of our lives. In Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 11. But she, the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, uh, dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. By the spirit that dwelleth in you. In Romans chapter 15, Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 9, 19. Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 19. Look at what it says. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem to uh, and round about Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ were power, were signs and wonders. First Corinthians chapter twelve. We're reading from verse seven. First Corinthians chapter twelve, reading from verse seven, it tells us but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit to other. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge. And by the same Spirit, and to another faith, by the same Spirit, and to another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. Healing, by the same Spirit, and to another the walking of miracles. Look at chapter 12 of Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm reading from verse 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We're reading from verse 12. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. You know, it, the, the power never faded away. The power was always there. And Paul, the apostle, now told them, haven't you seen, haven't you experienced the signs and the wonders, the signs of the apostles? Look at Galatians. Uh, chapter uh, 3. Galatians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 5. He therefore that minister that ministereth unto you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you. Among those uh, Galatians, miracles were being wrought. So among God's miracles will be wrought every time in Jesus' name. Do I eat by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Look at verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us, for it is reaching, because said is every man that hangeth upon a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I will receive. I said, I will receive. You know, somebody can say, I will receive. Another person can say, I will receive. Another person will say, I will receive. You will receive in Jesus' name. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. As you know, I go to the retreat, as you go to the retreat, the final solution retreat, all the time you are reminding yourself now unto him that is able, our God is able able to heal, able to cure, able to deliver. He says unto him that is able to do, according above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him the glory in the church by Christ Jesus, through, uh, it says, uh, through, out all ages, world without end. And the church said, 
Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able. Our God is able, and then we also, when we take the shield of faith, he shall be able to quench, tell me, all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the fiery darts of the wicked. It will happen in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 10. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That's the name those apostles used. You remember Peter, we're ready to ready. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And it was so. You remember the one that had the spirit of divination following after Paul, the apostle. And he turned back and he said, in the name of Jesus, come out. And he came out. That name is still here today. And that name is still powerful. And the name will work wonders in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 13. Was delivered us. I'm delivered who has delivered us, I said I am delivered, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In that kingdom, there's no sickness there. In that kingdom, there's no infirmity there. In that kingdom, there's no impossibility there. He has translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. You will enjoy that in Jesus' name. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, and I'm reading to you from verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in words only, but also in power. A gospel came not unto you in words only, empty words, superficial word, word that can do nothing. But the gospel came in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Look at chapter 1 of Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. We're bound to thank God always for you. Every day of that retreat, always for you. As we turn to the left, miracle. Turn to the right, healing. Move forward, deliverance. Look at the person behind us, joy and testimony. We're bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet because that your faith grows exceedingly. Your faith grows exceedingly. You know some people, their mountains grow higher than their faith. But for us, our faith will grow higher than our mountain. Our faith will grow greater than our sickness. Our faith will grow greater than any challenge in our life in Jesus' name. Your faith grows exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all, each to each other, abounded. And I will come to point number four. Point number four, the faithful source of health for the body. What's our source? God the Father. What's our source? God the Son. What's our source? God the Holy Spirit. And then the might that he has given us. And the spirit he has given us. In First Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 14. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, by the laying on of hands of the hands of the presbytery. The gifts will have, the gifts of the Holy Ghost will drive every sickness away. We will not fear. We will not be timid. We will not be discouraged. Why? Second Timothy chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 6. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, the gift of healing, the gift of the working of miracle, and the gift of faith. Stir it up, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind, I will have it. I have it already. Titus chapter 1, 
We're reading from verse 2. Titus chapter 1 verse 2. In hope of eternal life, in hope of abundant life, in hope of conquering life, in hope of spiritual life, in hope of even physical life, in the hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie as promised before the world began. We have hope because we know the God who has promised to us cannot lie. That's why in Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, that the communication of your faith, communicate that faith. Don't communicate unbelief. As you talk to one another, as you reach out to one another, communicate faith that the communication of thy faith may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing, by the acknowledging of every good thing, by the confession of every good thing, which is in you you in Christ Jesus every good thing you have you will confess and as you confess it will be done in Jesus name how do we know that Hebrews chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 8 Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever what he did before you were doing your life this time and the preservation he gave all his own disciples and servants, he will put that preservation in your life in Jesus' name. In your life, you will find Jesus Christ the same. In your ministry, you'll find Jesus Christ the same. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. It will be done in all our lives in Jesus' name. We're coming to James, in James chapter 5. James chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. God will answer your prayer. Is any merry? Let him sing. Sing psalms. Remember that we believers, as we sing, our songs are not ordinary. Jehoshaphat went to, to the battlefield, and the, you know, the prophet of God spoke to him, and he got all those singers together, and as they sang, all the enemies began began to defeat themselves as our choir sings and as we sing in this retreat all the mountains will vanish away and the enemies will tumble and fall in Jesus name is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church that means our leaders our preachers our overseers the prayers of our overseers will be answered upon you in Jesus name let him call for the elders plural plural elders of the church that and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up if he has committed any sins uh, committed sins they shall be forgiven him confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that she may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man tell me availeth much our prayers will avail appears to prevail look at first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 and i'm reading here from verse 24 first peter chapter 2 verse 24 it says who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes by whose stripes by whose stripes Ye were healed. You have been healed already. It's paid for. All you need to do now is just reach out and collect it, and it is yours in Jesus' name. Second Peter chapter one. I'm reading from verse three. Second Peter chapter one. We're looking at verse three. According as His divine power, He has given unto us. He has given unto us. I have received. I said, I have received. He has given unto us how many things? All things that pertain unto life. Healing pertains unto life. Deliverance pertains unto life. Job pertains unto life. Prosperity pertains unto life. Provision pertains unto life. He has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature, your habit 
it in Jesus' name. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, I have received. I have received. We're looking at First John, First John. We're looking at chapter three, First John chapter three, and we're looking at verse twenty-one. First John chapter three, verse chapter two, chapter two, verse twenty-one. Look at that. I'm actually looking for chapter 3. Chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. You have confidence toward God. That every prayer you pray, God will answer. And whatsoever we ask, if we ask for healing, whatsoever we ask, if we ask for deliverance, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing is in his sight. Because of that, the second part of verse 8, the second part of verse 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might, that he might, destroy the works of the devil any work of the devil in your body it will destroy in jesus name first john chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 18 first john chapter 5 verse 18 it says we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not but he that is begotten of god keepeth himself and that wicked one toucheth him not Touches me not, touches you not, will not touch you in Jesus' name. Second John, second epistle of John, chapter 1, verse 2. For the true sake which dwelleth in us, the truth which dwelleth in us, the truth which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. And when you know that truth, you shall know that truth, and the truth will make you free. You are free. I am free. Third John chapter 1 verse 2. Third John chapter 1 verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Do you know you will prosper? Do you know the work of your hand will be blessed? Do you know you are not going to remain at this level forever? Everyone. Where is he? Where is she? You will prosper. I said you will prosper. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. You know, there are people that have prosperity, but there's no health to enjoy the prosperity. That will not happen to you. You'll be prospered, you'll be in health as thy soul prospereth. Spiritual, physical, and then professional, prosperity will meet together from all directions in your life. In Jesus' name. Jude, only one chapter, Jude, reading from verse 20. It says in verse 20, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and unto eternal life. Now, verse 24, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. He'll keep you from falling into sin. He'll keep you from falling into sickness. He'll keep you from falling into calamity. He'll keep you from falling into danger. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. We come to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation, I'm reading from chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 1. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 1, and it showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, at proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, and in the midst of the street of it. 
and on either side of the river was there the tree of life the tree of life that's what adam missed in genesis when they edged the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and then they were driven out lest they put their hand forth unto the tree of life and live forever but now that tree of life that he missed in this life we're going to enjoy perfect healing perpetual healing permanent healing the promised healing and now when we get over there then it says on either side of the river uh, that there we have the river the, the tree of life which bear 12 manner of fruit and yielded a fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations perfect health permanent health. right now there's perpetual health and when we get to the other side total complete perfect health for everyone in jesus name but three there shall be no more curse but the throne of god and of the lamb shall be in it and he and his servants shall serve him and there uh, and they shall see his face you see the face of the lord his name shall be in their foreheads and there shall be no night there and they need no candle neither light of the sun for the lord god giveth them light and they shall reign forever and ever i will be there I said, I will be there. You'll be there in Jesus' name. We've looked at the word of God tonight to remind ourselves that this provision of healing we're talking about and the provision of health we're talking about is available from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. And we know the final solution has now come. Where are you? I said, where are you? That final solution has come for you. Why don't you stand up and look at all these promises. Anywhere you turn in the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, and Deuteronomy, Joshua, anywhere the power of God is available for you. You come to the New Testament, Matthew, and Mark, and Luke, and John, and Acts, and Romans. The promise of God is there for you. Open your mouth to the Lord and claim the blessing which is going to be fulfilled. Your final solution has come. Ah. Uh -huh.